Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The United States boasts one of the most formidable aerial arsenals in the world. Underpinned by an array of sophisticated aircraft systems designed for a multitude of strategic purposes. Since the early 20th century, a strategic need for bomber aircraft existed in military operations as countries in war strove for a level of air power capable of delivering maximum destruction over distance and over enemy territory. As countries performed various experiments with bomber architectures during World War I and advanced aircraft design capabilities during World War II, the effectiveness of the concept was proven and the groundwork was laid for more advanced military applications in the Cold War. It was during that period that the B-52 Stratofortress was developed as a weapon system to support the U.S. Air Force. The B-52 Stratofortress was developed in the 1950s. The long-range, subsonic jet-powered heavy bomber represented an important evolution of air power and was aptly nicknamed the Buff for its size and brutalistic appearance, indicating the dominant swath of airspace the United States could control with its payload capacity and range. The B-52 Stratofortress effectively combined the capabilities of a weapon that conferred a necessary level of deterrence and capability with the engineering needed to sustain high-altitude flight and was designed to be carried on strategic bombing missions. Moving on to the dangerous firepower of the B-52 Stratofortress. It has a great capacity for delivering firepower. In its early days, the B-52H variant carried a 20mm M61 Vulcan cannon mounted in a tail turret, fully powered and operable as a defense against follow-on or even trailing enemies. This was removed from all operational airframes in 1991, with a greater focus on offensive capabilities. The current B-52 capacity is remarkable, capable of carrying close to 70,000 pounds of mixed ordnance. This includes bombs, mines, and missiles, with the ordnance configured in various combinations to meet the mission requirements. The B-52 can carry a wide variety of munitions, either carrying all of one type or a mixed selection. This can take the form of conventional bombs, like the MK-82 and MK-84 general purpose bombs, or more advanced munitions with more precise capabilities, like joint direct attack munition series bombs with GPS guidance, AGM-86 cruise missiles that can reach long distances for precision strikes, and let's not forget about the AGM-114 Hellfire missile, which is typically used as a precision targeting strike weapon. Regarding its structural capabilities for weapon deployment, the B-52 includes multiple hardpoints under the wings, alongside its internal bomb bays. This strategic combination of vast internal and external load capabilities ensures that the B-52 Stratofortress remains a cornerstone of U.S. air power, capable of delivering a variety of weapons across vast distances in support of global military objectives. Pre-flight maintenance and checks are important for preparing the B-52 Stratofortress for any mission both for the safety of the crew and the aircraft through the implementation of safety checks. 
These form a routine structure and logical sequence with the intention of providing a confirmation of airworthiness of the various flight systems and structures. The first point of order for maintenance crews is a visual inspection of the external structure of the aircraft. Crews inspected the fuselage, wings and tail structures for any evidence of structural damage or wear. This includes cracks, corrosion or any defect that would compromise the safety of the aircraft. The crew then checked the undercarriage and landing gear structures for proper alignment and operational order to support a safe takeoff and landing. Next, there is a review of the flight control systems. A thorough function check of the ailerons, elevators and rudders is conducted to ensure the components are responsive and operational. This is a critical check as these systems must function properly for the pilot to have command of the aircraft's controlled flight path. At the same time, the hydraulic systems that operate these controls would have their integrity and pressure checked for leaks to ensure the systems are within acceptable limits. After completing the mechanical inspections, the focus now shifts to the avionics of the airplane Technicians will power up the navigation, communication and radar systems to verify they are operational and working as intended. This is important to ensure the airplane can communicate and navigate properly, especially over hostile or remote areas. Finally, the checks include the armament systems. This typically involves confirming that the ordinance has been loaded and secured properly, checking that the electronic systems that are connected to the weapon systems are fully functional, and verifying that the release mechanisms work properly. This is a critical check for mission accomplishment as it ensures it can deliver the ordinance accurately and alone. Moving on to the specifications of the B-52 Stratofortress. It is an enormous aircraft, truly an impressive piece of engineering, notably for its size and ability to perform. The B-52 is 159 feet 4 inches long, has a wingspan of 185 feet, and stands 40 feet 8 inches tall, making it one of the largest bombers in the U.S. Air Force inventory. On performance, the B-52 Stratofortress has excellent operational performance. The operational range is up to 8,800 miles when not requiring air refueling, which can be extended using aerial refueling. The other performance measure of note is its service ceiling. That is the maximum altitude that the aircraft can operate effectively. it can fly to approximately 50,000 feet, enabling it to evade much anti-aircraft fire, which takes place at lower altitudes. The B-52 is powered by eight Pratt & Whitney TF-33 P3103 turbofan engines, which produce thrust to maintain high speed and heavy weight. The B-52 can carry these turbofan engines to fly long range and potentially allow the B-52 to deliver a great variety of munitions anywhere on Earth. Mm -hmm. 
Another remarkable aircraft often utilized in specialized missions is the AC-130. The AC-130 is based on the C-130 Hercules, a versatile cargo airlifter that first flew in 1954. The AC-130 was made to do close air support, air interdiction, and force protection. While the AC-130 is a gunship, it's based on the C-130, which is considered to have high endurance and a large payload capacity. But the AC-130 is equipped with heavier weapons and advanced sensors in order to strike ground targets. Currently, there are several different AC-130 models operating, and each model has different functions and uses different types and configurations of weapons and technology. The AC-130U Spooky and the AC-130W Stinger II are notable models and have all been upgraded from earlier gunship models. The Air Force describes the aircraft as having advanced sensors and precision-guided munitions. It also has advanced defensive systems. Now, let's talk about the technical capabilities of the AC-130 gunship. This aircraft excels in performance and durability, specifically engineered for close air support and attack missions on ground targets. This aircraft has a length of around 97 feet 9 inches, a wingspan of 132 feet 7 inches, and a height of 38 feet 6 inches. Each of these stats aids the AC-130 in stability and carries an adequate supply of weapons. Regarding its performance specifications, the AC-130 has a combat radius of approximately 2200 nautical miles and can fly at an operational altitude of 25,000 feet. The capability of high operation altitude allows for the AC-130 to conduct surveillance and precision attacks while operating outside the effective range of the vast majority of enemy ground fire. The AC-130's weaponry is fundamental to the specifications of the aircraft and is equipped with a combination of 105mm M102 howitzer, one of the only air-deployed cannons of that size, a 30mm GAU 23A autocannon, and depending on the configuration, a 40mm Bullforce cannon. These weapons furnish the AC-130 with the capability for prolonged and accurate fire support during extended missions concerning ground forces in combat. As for the engines of the AC-130, it's powered by four Allison T-56A-15 turboprop engines, with each engine generating 4,910 horsepower. This engine configuration provides sufficient thrust to carry the large weapons and sensor payload, while also having the ability to cruise at an approximate 300 knot speed. The substantial engine configuration meets the vast operational demands of the aircraft, while allowing for the AC-130 to operate in a wide array of conditions making the aircraft a highly valuable asset in the U.S. Air Force's tactical fleet.
As we've explored the impressive capabilities of both the B-52 Stratofortress and the AC-130 gunship, it's clear that these aircraft are not just tools of war, but also marvels of modern engineering. Designed to meet the complex demands of contemporary military operations, their advanced technologies and formidable armaments ensure that the U.S. maintains a significant strategic advantage in aerial warfare. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.